What's up everybody, Couch Mills here, and today we're going to be breaking down the most overpowered DPS in the game, secretly, it's Widowmaker. And we're going to talk about exactly what makes Widowmaker so strong, everything you need to know about getting good at Widowmaker, and what you can do to start popping off and hard carrying your terrible teammates every single day game now as soon as this video goes live i'm going to be live on twitch myself giving away free vod reviews doing tips and tricks and grinding some ranks so go check me out and smash that follow button down below and let's get into the content now widowmaker is a character that can be pretty difficult to master but when you do you have the potential to completely dominate fights because getting pickoffs on characters just completely remove them from the battlefield and you don't need an ultimate, you don't even need an ability. You only need your primary fire and proper aim and positioning. But we're going to get to that in a second. Let's run through Widowmaker's abilities, the big mistakes that players are making on each one of them, and the big things that you need to work on if you want to master Widow as quickly as possible. First off, the primary fire. Now, if you are past 70 meters, there is going to be fall off. But underneath the 70 meters, here is the number of percentage you need to reach to do certain damage thresholds in the head. 45% for 150, 63% for 200, and 82% for 250. Now, making sure that you get a feel for the timing of this is going to be important because if you're waiting from 63% all the way to 100% on a 200 HP target, you could have fired earlier and still got the kill. So it's something to consider. Consider. Now, past 70 meters, or basically from very far exchanges, you're going to want to actually wait until your gun is almost fully charged up always, because you're not going to be able to one-tap a lot of characters as the fall-off damage increases, so keep that in mind. Now, next up, let's talk about when and where you should SMG on Widowmaker, and it's basically when you can confirm a kill 100%, although it happens a lot with Widows where they get too comfortable with body shotting someone, getting them to half, and then just SMGing them down. And while this is going to work if your opponent isn't very mechanically competent, they could get peeled out in that time, and as you climb, you are going to get punished for this more and more. Realize starting to use SMG as a crutch in these situations will come back to bite you later on when you really need to properly practice and learn how to hit close range snipes next up we got to talk about grapple and the first thing that people always ask me is when should you go for grapple shots the first thing that you could do is use it as a follow-up to a momentum like if you get an initial pick you could use a grapple shot to follow up and help the momentum of your team because like a Widowmaker doesn't immediately want to push up with her team when she gets a kill but if you're looking for another kill as enemies are retreating grapple can be a great way to do that generally though grapple is a great tool to use to get an alternate angle on an enemy but you got to make sure that you can't get punished for it if the opponents still have divers alive or there's a chance where within that time slot where you don't have your cooldown you could get pressured or your team could get pressured then a grapple shot becomes far more risky this goes double for aggressive grapples or grapples on the high ground hypothetically that is in neutrally controlled space you could get really easily punished in this area so these things should be really done very specifically if the enemy team composition doesn't have anything that can chase you down or contest the high ground for instance next up we do got to talk about venom mine and mainly you're going to want to use it either one to notify you if there's a flanker that's like the best use for it is just to notify you if there's a flanker coming for you and in some cases, like the Genji matchup, you could even put it really close to you. So if a Genji dives into you, you could body shot him, he could eat the mine, and then you can SMG him a little bit and he would die. So you're playing around his direct engage. But in other circumstances, you can really use Venom Mine basically anywhere. It's better to just chuck it into the enemy team or chuck it in a very commonly pushed area so it gets incremental value up against compositions that aren't going to flank or walk into it very often. Because you just don't want to just have it sitting there not being used, right? You want to make sure that you're using it at all times because it's free value potentially. And if an enemy just walks into it in the mid fight, you can get a free pick on them. You know exactly where they are. They're taking trickle damage. You get the idea. Now, last up in this category is the ultimates. And a lot of people wonder when you should be popping your ultimate. And really, you just don't want to pop it when, one, the fight is lost, meaning that no matter what you can do with the ultimate, you're not going to be able to actually carry the fight or win the fight. Typically, when, like, your tank is dead or multiple members of your team is dead, you don't really want to invest it there because you're not going to be able to shut down their tank, even if you know exactly where they are. And then, two, you don't want to allow your opponents to back up 
up and disengage from the fight, right? These are the situations where you don't want them to just be able to trade time for your ultimate. So better examples are when the fight has already started, when the enemy is committed positionally, like pushed into the fight, when the enemy has already invested abilities or ultimates, or even in situations where the team fight has already started and picks have happened either on the enemy's side or on your side, as long as the fight's still winnable, you can invest it because in the mid fight, when the enemy's already pushed in and already engaging your team, having full information on them can not only help you, but your team as well. But of course you're highly prioritizing you because you're the one who can get the picks to turn the fight and information becomes super super strong on a character like Widowmaker. Now moving on to what everyone wants to know right how do you get godlike aim on Widow and most people will actually first off go to aim trainers things like Kovacs and aim labs. I've spoken out against them a lot on this channel before and I want to make it clear Kovacs and aim labs aren't terrible for developing your raw aim in fact, it's pretty good for players to use to warm up or to develop very specific parts of your aim or like if you're very, very new to FPSs in general. But here's the thing. You got to understand that aim labs will never replicate what it's like to play Widow in a game. Not only is your weapon different, the tempo is different, the hit boxes that you're trying to shoot are different. There's so many different aspects that you have to kind of put together along with the pressure you're going to be facing when players are actively shooting at you and diving onto you and all this stuff that it's not giving you like 95% of what you need. The analogy I like to use is it's akin to lifting weights and you're trying to be like a professional basketball player. Player. While lifting weights can be great for a basketball player, it can definitely make you potentially jump higher, run longer, whatever the case may be. After a certain point, it's a huge amount of diminishing returns, and you really need to go in there, practice some shots, practice some three-pointers, understand the game, practice your defense. You get the idea. Like, there's a million other aspects to basketball besides just lifting weights, and if you're spending, like, a huge amount of time just aim training, you're really just wasting a lot of time. So then the next question is, what do you do instead? Well, initially, you could do something like Vax to being able to shoot against bots in the game, actually shooting with Widowmaker and against Widowmaker models. That can be decent, still not fantastic because you're not actually dealing with the pressure or the positioning of real people and the movement of real people in a game, which is going to be far different. Widow Headshot can be something that's good for you learning specifically the Widow matchup, which I'll talk about how to dominate in a second. We're going to get to that, but it's something that isn't going to always be there, right? You're not only going to fight against Widowmaker, so you can't only practice this. Triad Free For All can be a great environment where you practice up against skirmishes, against characters that are trying to kill you, dive around you. This is where you get really good at fighting against tracers blinking around you or Genjis that are diving on top of you. But just like normally, it's not going to be always replicated in a game. Sometimes you're going to have long distance engagements or you're going to have to try to find that angle up against tanks that are pushing you, not replicated. So, What's the truth? How do you really get good Widow Aim? Well, you combine a lot of these different things, but you also make sure that you're putting ample time into Widowmaker. And this is the most important thing. Oftentimes, a Widowmaker player will play Widow. They'll play Widow a little bit or in optimal times. The second they get dove, the second they get shut down or countered, or they feel like their aim's slightly off, they swap off. And the reality is they don't spend that much time playing Widow. Maybe you play 40 hours of comp a week, and you're only spending 5-10 hours on Widow. And if you want to get good Widow aim, you have to hyper-focus on Widow. Now, maybe this means that you make an entirely new account and you grind only Widow on that account, or maybe this means that you are sticking to your character a lot more, even up against counters and opposition, so that you can learn better to play around things and you can develop your aim more so, because realize the best environment to develop good Widowmaker aim is just by playing Widowmaker in comp as much as possible. Besides that, it's just hours grinded, and I understand that there's going to be time periods where you feel like your aim isn't getting any better, but oftentimes what I've seen through my personal experience and coaching people is there's long periods of time often of stagnation or slight improvement into sometimes sudden rapid improvement, and you're basically hitting a breakthrough. Now, I did mention counters. How do you play Widowmaker up against counters? How are you still effective up against counters? And the first thing that you need to do is you need to identify what kind of counters they are. Sometimes the counters are like long distance snipers, like a Hanzo. You have to make sure to engage him in very short peak windows. So you jump an angle and you peek him, you get maybe one or two shots off, and then you instantly de-peak the angle. You can't be jiggle peeking or slide peeking or holding an angle for a very long time. You're just gonna die. The shots 
are way too easy for a Hanzo. You have to be very deliberate with your engagements and from longer range is better. On top of that, against other characters that want to dive you or get close to you, it depends on what. Oftentimes, if you make sure to keep track of how they're navigating across the map, like a Tracer or a Genji, putting damage into them as they're navigating is going to force out cooldowns, and you're going to get a lot of opportunities to kill them as you're backing up positionally. But against some characters that really, really want to chase you down and shut you down completely, like a Wrecking Ball that you can't do much against, you want to play close to a support or close to Peel, because those characters will just chase you to the ends of the earth. Although, if you back up positionally all the way back to spawn and this wrecking ball just wants to waste his time completely you could technically swap off and make him waste his entire time or just stay in freaking spawn i mean trading your life for a tank i think that's kind of worth it if he just wants to do nothing else now the basic takeaway i want to give to you here is you just have to make sure that you are positionally changing up against every single counter the way in which you position needs to be different. You need to be positioning far more passive. You need to not be going for these aggressive grapples. And you need to make sure that you are keeping track of where the opponent's characters that are countering you are moving because a Genji isn't just appearing on top of you. A Tracer isn't just appearing on top of you. They had to route from somewhere. There had to have been opportunity as they were routing for you to get an angle on them. And if there wasn't, you're pushed way too far up and you need to back up positionally, give yourself more opportunities to get a shot on them, do damage to them, and then past that, practicing in places like Tried Free For All will help you win the close-up matchup. Now, let's move on to the Widowmaker matchup. This one's really, really important because especially when you start popping off a Widowmaker, you're going to run into Widowmakers that want to challenge you, and if they're better than you, you're going to die a lot. So the first thing that you should do is constantly be changing up your angles and coming from untraditional angles. If you peek from one angle, you don't want to re-peek that angle up against the Widow because they're going to be Valorant holding it. Oftentimes, you want to constantly be repositioning and mixing up any angle that you take a shot from you should be peeking from an alternate angle remember the easiest shots or the easiest kills on a widowmaker is when she's guarding one angle and you peek her from a different one and you can do this with grapple or you can do this with mix-ups you can do this with even flanking around to an alternate angle you can beat better widowmakers than you mechanically if you're alternating your angles and choosing and selecting angles that are not expected because the widowmaker is just not going to be ready for you and it's going to be a really really easy shot the widowmaker is just standing there holding a different angle and you kill her Alternatively, you get really good at the mechanical side of the Widow 1v1, which in headshot free-for-all or just practicing a 1v1 matchup against a good Widowmaker player you know. If you have any high-ranked players that you know, I would highly suggest just going up against them over and over again in Widow 1v1s, and you're going to get better that way as well. Because the real thing to the Widowmaker matchup is not only your mechanical aim, but your movement as well. What you're really trying to do is gauge when the enemy widow is ready to fire, right? Because they fire and then they have to charge it before they fire again. And around that time period, you're trying to dodge the shot. Typically with a crouch, you're trying to dodge the shot that's coming out. And the second that that person misses a shot, now you already have a shot prime. So now they have to dodge your shot while they charge up their next shot. Because... Now they can't just stand there and just try to hit you because they can't lethal you yet because their bullet is not charged because they just shot. So it's a back and forth between the second you fire and miss, now you're just trying to dodge their shot so that you get to fire as they're trying to dodge yours. You see the, the, the back and forth here. And it's really about getting into that rhythm of playing to dodge and then playing to shoot and then playing to dodge and then playing to shoot and when you're trying to shoot you're not trying to dodge you're trying to isolate your movement stand still get ready to shoot them because they can't lethal you in that window after they shot but they're going to be able to in a second so you want to take your shot so then you can basically split up the movement and the aim in separate categories and this is kind of tying into the biggest mistakes i see on widowmaker and something that you need to understand your movement really affects your aim on Widow. It directly affects it in a very, very big way. If you crouch, if you move left and right, if you sway, all these things are moving your crosshair. And especially if you're up against a target that doesn't threaten you in any way, like they can't do any damage to you at all, don't even move. Don't even move. If you are literally fighting Azaria, the Zarya's across the map, she's looking at you and she can't do any damage to you there's zero point in you swaying there's zero point in you crouching there's zero point in any of that and the thing is those things can affect your aim so then you have to ask yourself when should i actually move to survive because that's what movement does for you it makes you more survivable but 
oftentimes it's better to be less survivable but more lethal when Widowmaker wins a matchup with a single headshot you don't want to mess up your aim like if I move a little bit and make myself 10% more survivable but because I moved I miss a headshot I would have hit it would have been far better for me to not move and hit that headshot so it's going to depend on a lot of factors like how lethal the opponent is what's the effective range how low you are health total wise but the majority of the time widowmaker wants to take really precise duels where she's not moving hardly at all and if she's going to move at all she's literally leaving like she's getting out of there not standing there standing around trying to make herself more survivable by swaying crouch peeking and doing all this crazy stuff because you're messing up your aim. The other mistake that a lot of Widowmaker players are making is they have a poor judgment of effective range. Widowmaker has the longest effective range in the game. You should be positioned as far as you possibly can. It's gonna make everything less effective against you. Whether that's tanks like Roadhog, whether that's freaking Sigmas, whether that's Genjis or Cassidy's, it doesn't matter. Position the long sight lines, abuse them, play in an area that enemies literally can't kill you or can't even be that effective against you because of how far you are away and periodically back up throughout the entire time the opponent's pushing. If they push up, you pull back and you just keep doing that so that you're never in their effective range and you're always in yours. Super, super important. And then the last big mistake is just peaking angles too long. It's really important that you peak angles deliberately when you're on Widowmaker. If you're gonna challenge an angle, do it by surprise. You have a couple of moments or a couple of shots for where the enemy hasn't really gotten a read on where you're shooting from, and that's when it's easiest to shoot a target. But then after that, not only are they gonna be playing around that angle, but they're gonna be spamming damage into that angle, and you're more likely to die, less likely to get a kill. So you wanna reposition and mix up to a new angle and just keep doing that periodically. You're really not gonna to wanna to stay in an angle for very long at all. Maybe two or three shots max is what I would say. Now this gives you everything that you need in order to become pretty cracked on Widowmaker, but of course the true way to get better is by just grinding it out and climbing. So you have a long way ahead of you, but I promise you, you will get there and become a God Widowmaker if you stay the course. Now, make sure you subscribe to my second YouTube channel that's going to be in the description down below. And come check me out live right now. We're going to be streaming, doing VOD reviews, and everything like that. So go check me out, and I'll see you next time.